Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to the best kept secret on YouTube. Uh, this is Tease Time. I'm TJ. Uh, today, we're going to continue with our maintenance. I have more uh, oil leaks, oil seals, stuff I'm replacing, getting this thing up to par. Uh, this is Percy the Van. It's a 6.7 liter Cummins engine. Uh, today, we have our uh, oil cooler uh, gaskets. Uh, these right here, these are getting replaced. And then along with that, since I do have to take off the, the oil cooler, some people call it the oil warmer because it uses the coolant. Uh, it gets like your oil up to temp, but like cooler, warmer, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but this is what we have here. Uh, this is the oil cooler. Uh, before I install this or before you install, uh, don't just assume parts are good to go like straight out the box, even though it's brand new, that is good. I'm gonna attempt to rig up uh, a pressure tester here just to test the pressure make sure there's no leaks in this uh before i actually go ahead and start uh disassembly uh just make sure that your parts are good to save yourself a headache and time uh you don't want to replace a part that's actually function it's just leaking like it's an external leak uh so this you don't want an internal leak so that's what we're going to do right now i have some stuff uh to rig up i have uh, a bicycle tube right here i'm gonna try to rig this up to seal uh, the oil uh, cooler up just so i can apply pressure with a bike pump i'm gonna get it up to 70 psi hopefully i'm gonna get it up to 70 psi uh so let me get the rigging um enjoy like we'll get i'll do the the install and everything i'll give you the the step-by-step -step how to actually like do this uh but to begin with i need to actually just pressure test it so that's where we're at right now and rigging begins <laughs> Uh, this is what I want. I want to keep this. I want to be able to use this to apply pressure to the oil cooler. Uh, so I'm just going to use, salvage this off of the tube. And I plan on using a socket and then stick it over like so. And then I have, in my head, it makes sense. This is a valve spring compressor. I'm going to use this to apply pressure. And then the inner tube itself should hopefully seal around the hole. Uh, so it doesn't allow uh, air to escape.
All right, right now it's at uh, 72 uh, PSI. I uh, want to aim for 70. You want to kind of imitate like oil pressure. Uh, so uh, what you could do, like if you had built a better contraption or what you could do, like once you replace the old one, you could probably actually uh, rig up like an actual like test plate by cutting off like the bottom piece of the cooler and again, like some uh, rubber and then just like sandwiching that together then actually bolting it together. Uh, but this setup works pretty good. Uh, you just have to kind of just uh, like I kept tightening it. As I was building pressure, it was seeping seeping out because I don't want to like go too crazy, like tightening this stuff down. Uh, so as it started to leak, like I would tighten it just enough so it stopped leaking. And it's still holding uh, 72 PSI. I'm going to let this sit for like a little bit. Uh, but while we do that, I'm going to go, you have to drain your uh, oil. And you have to drain your uh, coolant beforehand. Uh, if you don't do that, you'll have a big mess when you start unclamping this, undoing all the fittings and everything like that. You'll have a big mess. So uh, drain your coolant, drain your oil, and then I'm going to let this sit at 72 PSI. And when I get done, like if everything's still sitting at 72, I'm going to be cool with that. And what you could do also is just spray this down with water just to kind of see if you see anything. But I'm going to just go by the pressure. Uh, I don't have like too much of the surface area like blocked on the top and the bottom. Uh, so if it holds the pressure, I'm going to call that good. And... Oh, I usually like over a couple minutes, like if you have a little drop, it should be okay, but. See, I might want to actually spray it down some, like some soapy water solution just to kind of check. Um, I'm just gonna let that sit. Like this isn't a daily, so uh, I could go ahead and start getting everything drained. Uh, if you are working on a vehicle you drive every day, you might not want to like drain everything until you have like this tested and you feel like this would be good enough. It's a suffice for you doing your install. Uh, so let me show you how to drain the coolant, drain the oil, and we'll be back with this. All right, in preparation for draining fluids, uh, make sure you have something that can catch all your fluids and the capacity of those fluids. Uh, this is what I'm gonna use for the coolant, oil, and then we have a plus. I have this uh, dimple magnetic drain plug I'm gonna put in because we have to drain the oil anyway and also our uh, oil temperature sensor for our gauges that we previously installed. If you didn't see that, click on the link up top you can see that but this plug right here where the temperature sensor is going to live is going to go into the side right there of the block and then the drain plug of course where the drain plug goes and then for cooling right there that's your drain and there's a little access hole like right there where it should drain into And before you do that, open up your uh, fill lids for a radiator. We'll open that up. Our oil, we'll take that off. about like a quarter to a half a turn we'll let that do its thing and then also you have oil
keep an eye on your coolant when you're draining it. That's where we're at right now. So, need another bucket. All right, oil's drained, coolant's drained. We have to remove our oil filter. Uh, we have to gain access up here. We can remove that, that's our leak. So we're gonna have to remove all wires, all hoses, everything connected to the oil cooler itself. You have to remove that. So right now remove the oil filter and then just gain access. And if you are uh, testing your oil cooler for leaks, uh, right now probably be a good time to check to make sure it's uh, holding pressure. We are at 70 right here. So you get a good angle, pick that up at uh, 70. Uh, when I first started it, when I first started the pressure test, it was at 72. I uh, dropped it down to 70, then I reset and I tightened up the clamps and everything. So that's where it was before I drained everything. Uh, so that's cool. That's good to go. Uh, remove your filter, remove all your connectors, your hoses, everything that's going to interfere with removing that oil cooler.
right, that's out. Uh, this is what I have. I was using uh, this cardboard box just to kind of mark where all the bolts go. Uh, this one is going to have to go on the cooler before it goes in back on the side of the engine block. That one and that one. That one couldn't come out right there. Uh, that one is right there. It was blocked by that. So you would just unscrew it and then like pull it out a little bit and then screw it out so that we can free it. And then you just slide it out. And uh, notice like the O-ring on the side of this drain right here. You want to replace that. And then just make sure you get all your gaskets out. That's one right there. And there's one on this side that I have to remove also. And I removed uh, the coolant line right here that runs up to the, the EGR. Remove that. And then also, uh, depending on uh, your setup, you might not have to do this. Uh, but like I just disconnected the AC compressor right there just to kind of give myself some room. Uh, just so I could get in there because it was kind of tight on that back section right there. Uh, so that's what I had to do just to get a little more room, make life a little easier. Uh, whenever you're uh, removing all this stuff, uh, replace like your uh, coolant lines and stuff like that. Just like you can see like on that drain holes right there, I'll replace all of those. Uh, but right now, uh, just go ahead, get everything cleaned up, get everything prepped. And just make sure you get everything as clean as possible. Like all this, you want to get all like the, the gasket material that was left behind on the engine block. And you just, like you'll see, like I'm about to just clean everything up, remove all that, get all of the old gasket off. And there's uh, pressure relief valves on here also. Uh, so we're going to go through, I'm going to probably replace that. And there's also like the relief spring on that side, right down in there. There's an O-ring in there. I'm going to replace that also. Uh, replace as much stuff as you can if you have it out already. Like, don't do the job twice if you don't have to. So just take this opportunity and just get everything done right the first time. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and clean up. Uh, get these cleaned up. Gaskets removed. And we shall return. Oh, yeah. When you're cleaning that gasket material off, when you're using a razor blade, do not mar that mating surface. It will leak. Uh, go in at an angle like I was doing to separate it. I wasn't like actually using like the blade against the surface It was kind of just like parallel to the surface just to kind of get in between And then I was just using it to just uh, work my way around without like actually using like the sharp edge of the blade But like when you do scrape it off if you do scrape it if you don't use solvent or like some brake cleaner or Whatever to get that clean uh, Don't like gouge when you're scraping it like actually go like I don't know how to like usually probably like at a 90 degree angle or even like a little bit of 40 and like go away from it don't dig in towards the blade so uh yeah don't mess up <laughs> but uh we get this cleaned up and get this situated and we're gonna get this installed uh, make sure your uh, new gaskets they match up the ones that come off so you don't uh block any passages because there are different variances of this uh this is 6.7 liters cummins uh the gaskets i have do match up uh, those are the part numbers right there. There will also be a link down below uh, to click on to help make life a little easier for you. So we have that. Uh, we have all this. And also compare like your oil cooler to the one that came off. If you're replacing that. And make sure all the holes, everything lines up as it should. And then go ahead and clean. This we don't really need to go too crazy on. I just need to. That's actually trash right there. Um, you can hold on to it just in case. If that's what you do uh, with trash, this is trash. Uh, we're going to save this. Uh, I also have a pressure relief valve. We're probably going to attempt to take that out of here. But uh, clean, wax on, wax off. <laughs>
when you have this apart check for play make sure that this slides smoothly it doesn't hang up and then also like right in there you want to check for wear from this uh piston sliding you want to make sure that you don't see like any cracks or anything like that and just look make sure you look at like the wear how much is in there there's like a little bit like a millimeter or so that's fine like if that gets too crazy uh just replace this whole housing and i'll take care of that and it usually like new housing sometimes comes with like the piston the spring and the pressure relief uh valve also already assembled so that'll save you time like if you have this apart you could just replace this uh but like everything seems like it'll be fine i did replace the pressure relief valve though uh just use like a pry tool i just use this and you just get in there, like press down on the spring and you just pry. Just make sure you don't mar like the mating surface when you do that. And when you do clean this, uh, clean it. And then if you think you have it good, clean it again. Because you just want to make sure you don't have any of that gasket uh, material in here. So uh, clean, clean, and then clean again after that. And then probably even just double check. Like you think it's good, uh, it's not like double check because you'll probably find like some little pieces. You don't want stuff floating around like in your oil, and your coolant and stuff. So get this as clean as possible and make sure you don't mar the maiden surface. The maiden surface is clean and ready to go in for the next gasket. And then also I have like these little uh, O-rings right here. I'm going to replace those. I have some Vitan seals. I'm just going to match up the sizes and we'll replace those before I put it back in. Like if you're breaking like uh, seals and stuff like that, it's always a good idea to replace those while you uh, take them apart because they probably won't seal as good as they did before. They were probably barely holding. They were about to go anyway. So it's a good time to clean this, uh, replace the seals, check your uh, springs and everything like that. Make sure everything's good up to par. So uh, make it happen. <music>
And what you can do uh, for each one of those uh, bolts, uh, add some uh, anti-seize. I usually use uh, some uh, copper anti-seize right there. Uh, that'll just prevent those uh, bolts from uh, seizing up uh, later down the road, like you have to replace this. But we're gonna use these bolts that have to stay in when I assemble this to actually help hold this into place. Like I said before, like make sure like it's clean. You got all of that gasket material because there's like some pieces that are flaking off in there. Uh, I went through like a few times, but there's still cool. It uh. Don't forget the uh, coolant holes. I have to put this in kind of like at the same time because uh, there wasn't enough room for me like to remove this. So it goes in like so. So that goes in, then the coolant housing, then this top bolt right here, the middle one on the housing actually uh, holds that into place. And these are the orientation of the bolts. You have your top to the bottom. And uh, these two, you have to just note, or actually these three, you have to note that they actually hold the, the wire sensor. And this holds the, the coolant pipe. Uh, so just note that those bolts, they have to go in those same exact location. And uh, the stars, those are the bolts. This is the one I couldn't remove. And uh, this is the one I put in as, like, I have to kind of like tighten it like while it's on there i can't get like the wrench in there uh so we're gonna see how this goes hopefully i can get this whole piece in as it sits right here without any issue
and bada boom bada bing uh we have it in we have it installed uh it's kind of tight in here so i kind of moved the camera away just so i could get in there and uh tighten all these uh bolts up uh but this is what we have right here i'm uh put the the torque spec uh you do it in two stages uh but it's just like a couple that you won't be able to like actually get a torque wrench on it's like a couple that are hidden like behind like in here and there's like the top one up in that top corner i couldn't get like the the torque wrench on uh but do the best you can to torque these to spec uh i know it seems like a difficult but like use some extensions and uh might be swivels and if you use uh extensions or swivels just know like that takes a little bit away from the torque uh so turn it just a little bit more but the i'll input the torque specs and a picture of it to show you the sequence that you're supposed to do that uh at this time go ahead and get from under here uh go ahead and uh add your coolant add your oil uh, you could prime your oil filter. Some people don't like to do that because you could get like debris in it when you do that. But just uh, add your fluids. Uh, just make sure everything is uh, tight. So go back and double check like you drain your oil, you drain your coolant. Make sure that those drain plugs are tight so you don't have any issues. You'll make a big mess. Uh, you don't waste your money uh, with fluids just going on the ground. Uh, but that was like the, the most difficult part of the install was probably just cleaning, just making sure you get all the, the gasket material. I think that's like the most difficult part, like for all the jobs that I do, it's just like the cleaning part. But uh, some people might not be that cleanly and just don't care. So it'll be a little quicker for you. Uh, but just take your time, do it right. And since you have like all your coolant, all your fluids drained right now, it'll be the perfect time you have to do any other like repairs, any other gaskets, your oil pan gasket, which I have to do. Uh, so I'm not going to fill like this stuff up right now. And I like your coolant also, since you have that drain, uh, water pump, radiator, whatever you need to do, like do it now, like coolant lines, uh, check all that stuff, make sure it doesn't need to be replaced. And if it does, this is the perfect time since everything is drained, you might as well just do it now. So until next Wednesday, uh, good enough isn't good enough. I'll see you next Wednesday. Peace, TJ.